And once you raise your standard, no, I can have this. So this has helped me to be more generous. This has helped me to open up my heart, and this has helped me to just be open hearted to listen, to try new things. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Becky Choice Podcast Shows. I am humbled that you're here listening to this episode, and thank you for spending some time with me today. Today, I wanted to share with you four things that have helped me reach my fitness goal. Being a new mom, I know right now you're probably thinking, "What the heck? I'm so busy. You know, I have no time to work out. I don't even know how to fit a, a workout sessions in my day. I'm so busy with work, right? You have a lot of limiting belief, and I get it. As a new mom, juggling, you know, you have a toddler on one hand, you have a baby crawling around, or maybe not sleeping through the night, and and just wanted to be nursing on you all the time. You have no energy. So I wanted to share with you four things that have helped me. Reach my fitness goal, like to be as consistent as I could be in terms of my own fitness goal, and also how I have reached my business goals using these four tips that I'm going to share with you today. So I remember when I was about three months postpartum, my daughter is exclusively breastfed, and so she would be attached to my boobs literally every I don't know two, three, three hours, because I guess you know I created a habit that. She has to be attached to me on my boobs, so I really couldn't go anywhere. When I'm sleeping, I have to sleep beside her. I give her my boobs; it becomes an association with her, and it's my bad. <laughs> But I really enjoy that bonding time with her. I really enjoy having her right beside me. I feel really safe. I feel like I can feel her. I can feel her breathing. I can feel her sucking the milk, and just feeling really good. Like, but I was exhausted. Like it was just exhausting from top to bottom. She literally wake up two to three hours looking for my boobs, and I have no energy. And because of that, I knew I had to do something. Like when I was looking at the mirror at myself, whenever I'm passing by the mirror, I look at myself, look at that belly. Just I couldn't look at myself. I felt like I was a penguin. <laughs> I felt like it was. Just horrible to look at, and when I'm looking at the closet of my clothes, I am always going back to maternity clothes because those were the only thing that would fit me. You know, I couldn't go back to any of my old clothes, and but it's not like I have anywhere to go. But you know, I just feel really uncomfortable in my own skin, and I wanted to do something about it. First, this is the first tip I'm going to share with you: is you have to raise your standard and working on your limiting belief. By what I mean by standard is. Are you okay with that belly? Are you okay with just where you are right now? Is that your kind of standard? Do you accept that this is your mom body? Do you accept that? Okay, you know my mom looks like that. My grandma's generations looks like that. I'm gonna be okay like that. So is this your standard? Are you truly okay with that? Right? Because the one only thing that is really keeping you from what you want and thinking maybe you can't have it is because you don't believe deep down that you can have it. You don't believe. Deep down, that you can have the flatter stomach. You don't believe that deep down that you can go back to regular exercises. You know, with your core engaged and without leaking. Like you unconsciously thinking you just can't do it, and so that's why you have to raise your standard. You have to really honestly give yourself some talk to tell yourself: Is this really what you want, or can you raise your standard? And once you raise your standard, no, I can have this. You know, I really wanted to have that flatter stomach. I want a strong core. I want to be the role model for my own children. I want to influence them with my positivity and have a higher standard, so they can achieve anything they want in their life. I need to work on my limiting beliefs when I raise my standard. Okay, so I raise my standard. I wanted to have a flatter stomach. I want to actually no, not just a flatter stomach. I wanted to look good at the beach. I wanted to wear bikinis. I wanted to be around with my kids and chase them and not feeling like I can't do anything and sitting at the bench. I want to do a lot of things. I want to travel with my kids, but with this body, I just don't feel. Good. I don't feel comfortable. I just feel like I'm dragging the family down. Even though, yes, they don't think like that. The kids obviously don't think mommy is gonna drag them down. But I, I personally feel like if I have a high standard for myself, if I have more confidence and more self-esteem, this can portray to what my kids, Jordan and Emily, are thinking as they're growing up because they role model my behavior. So I need to work on my limiting beliefs. And when I work on my limiting beliefs, then I can align my voices that. The small little voices that is telling me no, you can't do this, you can't have it. I can actually align it and pull myself forward, pull myself forward to the destination I want to have. I want to, I want to get there. And so you have to work on that limiting belief. And so what I did is to read a lot. I read, I listened to a lot of audibles, so audio book. 
I listen to a lot of podcasts. This helps me to reach, to think about bigger picture, to inspire me to take actions. So I know you might be thinking, you don't even have time to like wash your face and change clothes and drink a coffee while it's hot. How do you have time to read books? So I actually don't read. Before giving birth, I I'm never the type that read. I never read anything other than literature, like other than like going to school, like those kind of things, like maybe magazine here. I don't even read magazine to be honest. So it was really a whole new chapter for me to read something. So I really didn't have time. I don't have that energy to read. I would rather rest my eyes when I can. It's just so tiring for me, right? Opening up my eyes all day and taking care of the baby. And I also was starting my business at that time and have to look at my phone all the time. I wanted to rest my eyes as much as I could. So I started listening to audio book and podcast. So podcast is free. This is what you're listening to right now. And I listen to a lot of audio books, and so those books has helped me tremendously to give me that good start off, to give me that momentum and energy to think that I can actually do this. So the books that I would recommend for you, if you're listening, you can listening, you know, on your walk when you walk with your baby on a stroller. When you're on your way to work, when you're driving on your way to work, because I've listened to it, I think that if you listen to the podcast or listen to audio books for like one whole year back and forth on average, you can literally get a degree from all the listening you have done. You like get a bachelor degree equivalent at the university because how much things that you absorb while you're listening to all these informations on the go. So there are a couple books that I would recommend you listening to. The first one that I read, actually personally, this is the very first book I read, is Compound Effect. The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. So he talks about how one insignificant things that you think you're not doing, and like the little things that you're doing, but by compounding it over time, you are going to make a little snowball into a huge snowball, like a little flake of snow into a huge snowman. So this is compounding effect. And the second one is the Go Giver. Is about giving more than you receive. I do believe, and this is probably apply to business more. I wanted to give you more than I receive. I'm not asking for anything in return, or at least not the equivalent. But I wanted to give, give, give. So this has helped me to be more generous. This has helped me to open up my heart, and this has helped me to just be open harder to listen, to try new things, and explore what I really want to do, and explore the inner self of me, and see you know where my true destination, where I really want to be. And the next recommendation is the 10x rule. So the 10x rule is by Grant Cardone, and this probably might be more business related, but however, it's. I learned one thing from Grant Cardone is like your success is your responsibility. There's nobody more want more things than you do. You have responsible for the success. If you want something, you go get it. You go get it. Nobody wants more than you. I can't want something more than you do, especially with fitness. I can't do the reps for you. I can't do the workouts for you. It's not like a done for you meal plan that I can like serve you the meal and put it right in front of you, and you just have to eat. But I can't. I I cannot do the reps for you. You have to want this more than you do. You have to do want this more than anybody else. So the ten x rule, and the last one is the ultimate Jim Rome library. So Jim Rome has impacted me a lot, especially I listened to this book. It was like a six seven hours audio book. It's a really long book. However, I I read it while I was driving on my way to work, on my way back, and I listened to it actually two to three times. I don't remember exactly, but I listened to it, and I there are a couple of times that there were things that Jim Rome said. Related so much to me, where I like I truly find the true self inside, like really what I really wanted to do, like what Becky Choice wanted to do, and like that made me cry, like while driving on the way to work. So it was really powerful, and these books has really tremendously shifted my mentality and physically, like because it gives me that inspiration to take action. So I would encourage you to explore this book, listen to podcasts if you don't wanted to buy anything. Podcasts has a lot of good tips, wonderful tips, and audio books, of course. That those are the ones that I recommend it and listen to it in Audible. So the second tips I have for you is you must throw yourself out there, like throw yourself out there, literally. So okay, maybe not throwing yourself like not to the street, but what I mean is you must, if you want a transformation, if you want to reach your fitness goal, you must have someone to keep you accountable. You cannot. It's just so hard for you to secretly want to do this. Like you're gonna secretly do this, nobody will know because why? Because if nobody keeping you accountable, then it's like okay, if I fail, it doesn't matter. 
right? Nobody knows. I'm not going to be embarrassed. I'm not going to be shameful. Like, it's okay. Like, I fail, I fail. But if, if you throw yourself out there, if you get yourself a little bit uncomfortable, then you have a bigger desire to achieve the things you want because you will starting to feel like, okay, crap, if I don't hit this goal, like, I will look a little embarrassed, right? So what I did with after my first pregnancy was I actually posted a social media. I actually posted my picture, the current picture at that state. If you looked at my in Facebook, you would see it. If you look at my Instagram, you would see it. It's the picture of my before picture. I put it on social media. All my friends saw it. Like literally, when I post this picture on social media, I literally threw my phone away. I wanted to throw up because it was so embarrassing. It was the most horrible, like I wouldn't say horrible, but like it was so embarrassing for me, but I knew I had to do it. If I don't, throw myself out there if I don't put myself out there that's exactly what I was saying like probably maybe halfway through I would be like oh this is too hard for me I'm not gonna continue I'm just gonna give up and nobody would know right but once I throw myself out there I have to show something if next week I show up the same as me if I don't change anything physically if I look the same if my belly looks the same then it kind of feel embarrassing right so you would feel a little bit more motivated. Okay, I need to do, I need to do better. So that's what I chose to do. I, you know, I chose to share pictures. If you feel like, okay, this is a bit too much for you, you can share a picture with like just somebody you don't know too well. Because if it's somebody you know, you care like your mom, your dad, the effect might not be as great, right? Because they, oh, okay, they know you anyways. And you know, it's like, it's okay. If they still love you anyways, if you don't attain your goal, right? But let me be sure a picture with your sister-in-law or like a picture with a friend that you don't talk too much. And But like maybe they look really good and like you, you show them a picture, whoever that you think that, you know, you keep that, like keep that person, make that person, even though maybe they don't care anyways, but you throw yourself out there. Or like investing in a coaching program. Because if you're investing into a, if you're just watching YouTube videos, if you're just doing a small little program, because the money is too little, you don't have skin in the game. And then that the same thing happened. If you don't have skin in the game, you just, okay, don't care. Just a little bit of money. If I lose it, I lose it. It's not much anyways. But if you're investing into a professional program, then, you know, you have a, just a much more responsibility. Like you don't want to lose the money. You, you wanted to make every penny worth it, right? You don't want it to lose this hard-earned money that you made. So the more uncomfortable it is, the better. Here's a quote that I always have in my heart is magic happens at the end of your, of your comfort zone. Magic happens at the end of your comfort zone. The more uncomfortable it is, the more magic the unicorn will happen. I promise you. So you have to get, you must throw yourself out there. You must make yourself uncomfortable. The third tip I have for you is you must have your spouse on board both nutritions and also to keep you accountable as well but his accountability won't be as effective let me just explain more on this one especially if you're a new mom you know you have to change diaper you have to feed you have to do a lot of the things your spouse need to be on board i can only imagine how hard it is if your husband you know don't help too much and don't care and i don't believe that right if your spouse loves you they he should be on board with you especially has to be on board with your nutrition you can achieve your fitness goal and he's like eating chocolate in front of you and like eating this spicy chicken sandwich in front of you when you really wanted to reach your fitness goals and those are your favorite food that's just not fair he needs to be doing it with you if he's not doing it with you at least he needs to be knowing you know what's the boundary is and knowing how to help you out knowing not to tease you in front of you right so maybe also help him to help you with your baby give you that time that you need throughout the day so that you can get yourself the workout ends perhaps get your husband to be on board to take care of the baby agree with him that you know he's going to take care of the baby half an hour a day so you can get your workouts in think about the time talk with him you know why you need to make this happen for you right you really need to make him on board to understand your situations tell him why you want this right this is you you want this and you know if happy wife happy life happy husband right he's gonna understand my husband was really understanding he supports me every way he could possibly do and he is a really household man and i love him he does the cooking he does most of the cleaning in the house and i can't live without him because if he doesn't do any of that i probably wouldn't be where i am right now so he is a huge support in the house and he's gonna keep you accountable because once in a while when i'm like oh i really don't feel like working out i'm too tired he would say something like you know you need to do this he'll motivate me he'll try to say something so then you feel so even if you don't want to you will feel more motivated when your husband is on board so it just makes your life so much easier too 
And the fourth thing I wanted to share with you is you must prioritize and act. Okay, if you're thinking I want this, I wanted to be in the beach in bikini or whatnot, bathing suits. And if you're thinking without taking action, you're just dreaming. That's just dreaming. You're not taking action. You're not taking consistent action. It's just dreaming. You're not gonna move this needle forward. So one thing you know how to prioritize this is you have to mentally not just say it, but you have to mentally think about this every day. What time are you going to fit this workout in? I understand it's so hard for moms to plan anything ahead of time. It's like your baby schedule changes constantly, the feeding, the everything changes every single week. So you must prioritize yourself first, if not first, second, and also have a backup plan. So the first thing I would ask all my clients: Okay, what time are you going to work out? Is it before breakfast? First thing you wake up in the morning? Is it lunch time? Or is it evening time, right after your kids goes to bed? Don't go do your dishes. Don't go do your laundry. You have to do your workout first before anything. So those one some things that you must prioritize. You have to let's say your work, right? You have to work.、Uh, let's say you have to eat, and you have to eat, of course, right? But what can you do first thing in the morning so you can get that out the way? Okay, if morning thing is not your thing, is I'm not a morning person. If I try, it just It won't work. I was just so tired, just can't focus, and I don't have the energy in the morning. And I'll be so tired by the time maybe I'm like halfway through. I still not waking up. It's not as the quality is not as good there in terms of the workouts. So I would always work out after lunch time because that's when I'm most happy. My tummy is full and I digest pretty quickly, so it doesn't bother me if I work out like half an hour, even fifteen minutes after the lunch time. But I know I'm always there right after lunch. That's when I'm gonna work out. My kid's gonna be around me. Yes, my baby's gonna be around me. Maybe I need to lift a、uh, half, holding her while I'm working out, and that's fine. That's my plan. That's the backup plan. The backup plan is I will try to work out after I feed them. After I feed myself, you know, they're happy. They can be by themselves for a little bit, and then I'm gonna do the workout. If that, if my baby's, if my daughter is crying, I will pick her up. I'll do the workout with her. She can, she can be on a mamaru, be like lying around me. I'll do the workout. I'll throw a Broadway show in front of her, right? So if that still doesn't work, like if you know things just throw you, like you know, then I will have my husband to be on board, right? He is on board. He's gonna help me to do something so I can get that workout in when he's done work. He will ha- take care of the kids for half an hour. I'll get that work in. Get that get the workout in. That's the backup plan. If last but not least, I'm gonna work out right after they go to bed, right? After they goes to bed, you are gonna feel a little tired. What is it gonna make you a little bit less tired? So I take pre-workout drinks to make me more energized, to wake me up, to refresh me, so I can get that workout in. So you have to think about. You must prioritize. You cannot think about. Oh, okay, next week is a birthday party. Oh, another week is I'm gonna have a house gathering. Oh, another week is okay. When am I gonna have a date night? Yeah, these are important things. But when you're in that season where you wanted to reach a fitness goal, everything else should be your second or third. You must prioritize your workout. No matter what, you're gonna get that workout. No matter what, you're gonna meal plan and meal prep and make sure you get those nutritions right and get your husband to be on board to be. Having the same kind of meals as you, right? If he's eating fried chicken sandwich beside you, and you're trying to eat your healthy meals, it's so hard, right? It, it, it is. So you must prioritize. You must have your spouse on board and act. You must act. Thinking you cannot just thinking and wishing and and just hoping that this will happen for you because it won't. So and it that's, that's why it goes back to your number one is personal development and really work on that limiting belief. Why you think you can not have it? Why do you think that you cannot heal your diastasis recti? I'm telling you, if my clients, if all these pictures you see online or whoever had this transformation you saw online, if they can do it, why can't you? If they can do it, you can do it. They are not much different than you, and there are lots of pictures to prove that. They are not much different there you, than you. They are new mom. They are second time, third time, or even fourth time mom. They have twin babies. They are overweight. If they can get back in shape, why can't you? Right? You're no different than them. All you need to work on is go back to number one first, working on your limiting belief. Why do you think you can not have is that little voice that is telling you it's it's things that you might have read. Maybe it's scaring you a little bit, or maybe that you you don't feel like it's worth it. But thinking deep down, is this what you want? Is this the energy you wanted to portray? You want to have? Is this is this what you want for the rest of your 
mid thirties uh, for the rest of your thirties, for the rest of your forties, and then you're thinking, okay, now I'm forty, older now, it doesn't matter anymore. But if you're listening to this, you're probably my age, right? In your early thirties or so, you have a whole life in front of you. Is this really your standard? I want you to raise your standard and thinking about, you know, what's really holding you back. Work on your limiting belief and then throw yourself out there. Tell the world that you're working on this. Have a coach investing in the program. Have a coach to coach you, to keep you accountable. And then have your husband to be on board with your nutrition and just giving you that inspiration and giving you that push from time to time. And you must prioritize yourself. Don't make yourself the last thing on your to-do list. If you need to do your dishes, if you need to do your laundry, if you need to feed your baby, make the puree for your baby, if you need to do all that first, fold your diaper and all of that before you work on yourself, oh, you'll be so tired. You forget it. Like you just, you know, you might be able to do that for the first one or two weeks, but after that, you just energy drained. Like you can't keep up. So I want you to think about get yourself things done. Everything else, it's seasonal, right? It's not like you're gonna do this forever. This will gonna be become your lifestyle and habits. But the first thirty days, first first ninety days are gonna be a huge steps for you to make that monumental step forward to achieve your fitness goal. And I know, I believe that if you have these four tips and keep going back to it, these small steps that you're gonna take every single day. This small that you consciously decide to step up and have faith and have the courage and have the passion, you know, this is going to work and find out what's inside us is holding you back and constantly raising a standard. I promise this 10 degree movement, it's going to reach you your destinations because if you continuously constantly work going upward and you switch that 10 degree one day at a time, you're going to land to somewhere very different down the road and everybody will see that. I know you will get there. So listen to this podcast if you need to once again and i hope that give that this will give you some inspiration to help you to start your fitness goal and help you to reach where you want to be thank you for spending the time with me today and i'll see you in the next episode and hang out with me on instagram at becky Choi underscore and if you want share this episode with the mamas you know our new moms or how diastasis recti i hope that this will help them reach their goal as well mm-hmm.